Hey everyone, welcome back to Brown Coat Nerd. And today we've got a video that's going to be boring as hell unless you own a Set Me L, and even then the jury is still out. So, what we've got today, we're going to be comparing the surplus Spanish Set Me L furniture to Marco Mars' new production furniture. Now, just real quick, um, this gun originally came with the black Mark Lamar new production nylon six furniture. And then if you watched my, um, so if, if you want to know what this actually looks like with the black furniture, um, go check out my set me L first impressions video. I then have a first time shooting impressions as well as a set me L accessories video where I have the Spanish surplus furniture on it. And that's what we see off of the gun right now. And what we have on there, once again, is the Mark Lamar new production um, furniture, but in the Spanish green rather than the black that it came with. So real quick, um, you're probably wondering why even bother with that. Um, and really in general, like the Mark Lamar website, um, you know, kind of advertises this, that their furniture is much better quality. Um, it's made with a nylon six. I don't know if that's technically a palm or fiberglass or whatever that is, but it's nylon six compared to the original furniture that was made with a polypropylene substance. Um, and this original furniture, I will say it's, you can tell it's heavy duty. It's durable. It's not cheap or brittle, but at the same time, after handling the two, the new and the old, um, there is a very clear, obvious difference um, as to the feel um, and quality of the two. And one of the things that the Mark Lamar website mentions is that this polypropylene that the original Spanish furniture came in, and of course all of the surplus furniture is going to be your Spanish green like this, um, that because of the compounds in it, it's decaying over time. And I will say that I know when I handle this, and I've cleaned it up pretty good, there still is a little bit of dirt and grime down in there, um, but it kind of... I don't know if sweating in your hands is the right term. It kind of feels like it leaves a very subtle residue. Um, it's not something that you're like, oh, my hands are sick, I gotta go wash my hands. For me, in the, it's in the back of my head now, so I always do have to wash my hands after handling it. Um, and the best way to describe this, and this maybe will only come across to a few people out there, but it reminds me of what was it, like the early 2000s when I owned my Sony mini disc player. I love that mini disc player. Drive around, rock into my mini disc, you know, music compilations with my cassette adapter and my 2000 Mustang GT. Woohoo, those were the days. Anyways, that mini disc player had like this almost rubberized plastic coating on it, and it felt really nice. It felt really high quality when I first got it, but then I had it for three years and mini discs were completely phased out. And so I put it in a box and that got thrown in storage and non climate control. And I couldn't tell you how many years it sat in that box, but I do know a couple years ago I went back, rediscovered my mini disc player, and I was kind of excited because I wanted to see if I could get it to work again. People now actually like collect them, so I was wondering if I could probably just sell it for a decent amount. Um, but I pulled it out of that box, and that rubberized coating had like just decomposed. It was super sticky. It felt like a thin layer of funky film was over it, and that kind of makes me think about this material. Now, I don't think this will get as bad. It's not the same substance that Sony was using on their mini disc player, but when Mark Moore talks about the compounds are decomposing, like, I totally get what they're saying, and you don't really think about decomposing, especially when you're talking about some kind of a plastic material, um, but it definitely can happen. So the three people that are watching this that had a mini disc player, um, it's, it's very, well, somewhat, maybe not very, but somewhat reminiscent of that funky kind of oily feeling it would leave in your hands after handling it. So, real quick, this surplus furniture, which is the furniture that I have off of the Set Me L right now, um, I did purchase this from Apex Guns or Apex Gun Parts. Um, it was listed as actually being from Mark Lamar. So, when Mark Lamar was making all their guns, you know, obviously they're using their own new stuff. They sold all the surplus furniture off to Apex. Um, so if you buy the furniture set from uh, Apex, you got, what, a 1 in 10,000 chance it actually came off your set me. So cross your fingers. Um, but I got this for 60 bucks. 
It was listed as being in good condition. I did not see any that were listed in poor or excellent condition at the time I picked this up. So it looks like that might be all they have right now. Um, like I said, it was 60 bucks, so pretty freaking affordable. And that gets you the handguard, the pistol grip, the butt stock. Um, and the handguard will come with the original screws to attach to the heat shield. Whereas the uh, Marklemar furniture, when you buy one of these Marklemars, excuse me, got a little belchy there. When you buy one of these Marklemars, the furniture will be held in. Uh, it's the same thread pitch um, of screws, but they're Allen screws rather than a flathead. And that is much easier getting in there, especially this guy, because, you, you know, the Allens kind of stick on the Allen key there. Um, so those are simpler. Um, if you, like, don't have a Markle Mar, you've built your own set me, or you have a Hill and & Mac, and you're just wanting to get the new furniture on there, these will not come with those Allen screws. Um, but like I said, if you got the originals, those will work just fine. So no issues there. The Marklemar furniture, like I said, is made out of nylon six. Simply handling them, you can tell there's a big difference in quality. It it just it feels different. So what happened here was when I first bought this with the black furniture on there, because um, I kind of wanted to do make this my unique Setney L, and there's really not a whole lot of customization you can do when it comes to the Setney L. So I figured I won't get one in green, even though I came really close to ordering one in the original Spanish green. I was like, ah, I'll do black. And then in the back of my head, I was like, well, I do want to order the surplus um, stock set, mostly just because I'm curious about, what, you know, how they felt the comparison, you know, because that's really the biggest thing brought up when they talk about the new furniture and the old. It was 60 bucks, not very expensive. Plus, it gives me a chance to see what my black set me L would look like with green furniture. I was a little curious about that. So I threw the furniture on there. Um, you know, this furniture set, it's not bad. It does have some nicks and dings. It's definitely been used, um, but it's really not bad at all. So I was pretty happy with that. Um, and I really loved the look of the two-tone black and green. So I, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna leave this surplus set on there. And I do know that the black and green, it's, it's, it's hit or miss with people. You either love it or you hate it. I personally love it. Um, and I kind of wanted a little bit of the screen on there too. When I first noticed this set me L, I'd never heard of them like a few months before I even purchased mine. Um, I saw one advertised in that all, you know, this solid green, the whole gun was green. And that just really caught my eye. And I was like, what in the Cobra Command is this? And I mentioned that in my video too. It, it just immediately took me back to my days of watching G.I. Joe. Even though I've gone back and watched G.I. Joe, there's not a single freaking gun in that entire series that looks anything like this. It just brought me back to my childhood and that kind of cool, you know, retro 80s, whatever. So I kind of liked, you know, at least I have the green furniture on there. So then I had the surplus green furniture on there um, for quite a while. And I was like, you know what? I kind of want to see what it looks like with that black furniture back on there. And the furniture is not very complicated to swap out on this. It's fairly simple. You do wrestle with this heat shield a little bit sometimes, but it's not too bad. And so I decided to go ahead and put back on the uh, the new made Mark Lamar black furniture. And it looks, it really does look like a completely different gun. I was showing some pictures from some friends of mine. Um, they're not real big gun heads like I am, but you know, they're into shooting sports. And they were kind of taking it back at first. They are like, whoa, wait, this is the same gun? You know, it really does change the character of the gun. So then I had that black furniture on there for a while. And then I was like, God, this stuff just... I mean, the quality... I mean, you can literally just feel it. It's, it's much better stuff. And so I was like, okay, I'm, I'm just going to leave the better quality stuff on here. <sighs> But then I started missing that two-tone look, and I really liked it. So I decided that the best route to do would just get the new production uh, Green Palmer or Nylon 6 stock set from Mark Lamar. Now you can buy, they offer uh, their new stock sets in three different colors. You've got the Spanish green, the black, and then you also have one in Flat Dark Earth. Um, that goes on their flat dark earth models. Um, the Mark Lamar set, you get the handguard, the pistol grip, the buttstock. You do not get any pins. You do not get the uh, the screw that holds in the pistol grip. You don't get any of the screws that hold the uh, handguard onto the heat shield. It's just purely the stock set. 
and those do run 125 so it's twice as much as your surplus stuff it is going to be better quality and one thing to point out about the surplus stuff and this i'm sure drives some people nuts especially if you're ocd the greens don't really match like you're going to get like two pieces out of your surplus stock set that are probably going to match or at least be very close but usually the butt stock or the pistol grip um, are mismatched colors and that's unfortunate because those are the two pieces right next to each other you know and it's pretty obvious that those are two different color greens and i will also say that it almost feels like that this butt stock might be made out of a slightly different polymer or like it's got a slightly different maybe it's the same kind of polymer but a different compound i don't know um so i wanted to point that out with the marklemar stuff as you can see um it's all one color there might be a very very slight color deviation there but it's nothing like the original um surplus so if you're ocd that kind of fixes that problem of all the green so i decided to go ahead and get the new set um from mark Omar. also i have to say thank you to mark Omar for hooking me up with these patches that was pretty awesome thank you guys very much so uh, Mark Lamar has a really good copy of what the set me furniture was. Now I've only got an example of one uh, original surplus stock set here. I will point out that Mishiko, Mishiko's got some good videos on the set me L. Um, he has two different, I think he has a surplus stock set on its own and then I think he has a Hill and Mac build. And he said that in feeling it, that it felt like there were actually were two different pistol grips for the surplus set. He said he felt like one was slightly thicker than the other. So I do want to put that out there. There very well could be more than one basic variation of the Spanish um, stock set. There might be two, there might be three, because there are some small variations between the surplus stocks that I have and what Marklemar is coming out with. They're very small, they're very subtle, and I will show you those now. So first off, hats off to Mark Lamar for being picky about trying to make a good copy. I'm, I'm going to show the black Mark Lamar since it's off the uh, gun. But you can see that there. Sorry for the bruised thumb still. I don't know if that's where the, the plastic gets injected in or if that's where it gets pushed out of the molding. But it has that little circular spot where it should be. It's real light to see. But they even made sure that matches up. And then you got like a little, I don't know if that's like a, from the sprue or whatever, a little kind of point. It's hard to see on the surplus because it's pretty well worn down. Um, but they even have those matching. Um, so differences, we'll start on the inside here. Like I said, they come with different screws, but it is the same thread pitch and everything. Um, it's just the screw head that's different. You'll notice, let me switch these around here. You'll notice the Markamar one does have their logo on the inside there we go right side up it says made in usa obviously obviously that's not going to be spanish surplus and then also on this middle rib here you'll see it's kind of smooth where the uh, screw goes and then on the surplus it's kind of got like a square section just kind of lifted up a little bit um real minor difference there the biggest difference though is you'll notice on these lines on the surplus First of all, you'll notice these grooves, I, I feel like they're a little bit narrower on the surplus than on the newer Mark Lamar. And then where the groove starts, it's kind of the, it just cuts right down in there. Whereas on the Mark Lamar, it just kind of slowly steps down um, to get the depth in there. So like I said, Mark Lamar might be copying a different variation of the uh, Spanish Semi L stock kits. Um, but the one sample I have here that is where they differ. And then another spot. Back here, you got this little raised up area. Kind of borders around it. On the surplus furniture, it feels a little more sharp and defined. And I think that's because it actually it raises up just a little more than what Mark Lamar has on theirs. So that line is still there. It's just not as defined. I was thinking that you could kind of see a crease here, but maybe not. I mean, it's all pretty, pretty well matched up. Like I said, I'm nitpicking. And also, 
Um, it still might be accurate, but just not to the surplus set I have. The pistol grips, they're, I really can't find any differences. Um, you'll notice the lines down on here, the Marklemar, the way it's cut in where it goes straight down kind of mimics that on the handguard a little more of the uh, original Spanish surplus. But they both seem to appear to be the same. They're the same thickness, at least with the example I have here, other than just feeling much better in quality. Now this little seam here, it is a little more obvious. You can feel a little bit more on the Mark Lamar, whereas on the Spanish one, it's a little more smooth. Now once again, this is used, so it might just be worn down. And at the same time, this isn't bad. Like I can notice it, but I'm not complaining about it. It's not to the point where I'm gonna have to go over this with sandpaper. That's plenty smooth for me. I'm just gonna leave it. I'm not concerned about it, so I just wanted to point that out. And we even have that little spot there. I mean, like, they, I really admire how they tried to match this molding as much as possible. And, of course, that, I think that's, that's just damage there. That's not how it was made, the little two spots there. And then the butt stocks. we got some differences here. So... On the original surplus kit, first off, we've got these two little spots where your pin goes in. It's got a metal ring around it. On the new Marklemar one, they're black. I imagine these started out black too, and they just wore over time. So I wanted to point that out. But this little kind of wrist section here, you can see it looks like the, the polymer is kind of like smeared. It's like wrinkly. Um, or almost like they took two chunks of molten plastic and just smushed them together and then you know kind of smeared them down and this is what they got um i don't think this is a defect in this one i think that was just part of the uh the production of these either this was the most economical way to do it with you know just not have it look pretty you have a little bit of an ugly spot there or there's just no getting around it obviously we've come a long way and injection molding and all that. So the new Marklemar one, it looks perfectly fine and smooth. It does not look funky. There's no smearing of any kind. And, you know, Marklemar is mimicking all the mold spots. This is a case of, like, why mimic that, you know? It's, it is kind of a byproduct of production on the original surplus set, I think. And also, if you were to mimic it, you're literally going to be putting in like these lines in the mold and every single one's going to look the same, every little crease, you know, it's, it's, it's just not needed. So, um, I do not blame Mark Lamar for not trying to mimic that. And it might even be a, just a big pain in the butt to try to mimic it, but it's ugly, you know, like they'd be getting complaints probably if they had that in there with their new stock sets. So it just looks a lot better without it. It's not needed. Don't need to worry about it. Get rid of it. So the other thing here I'm going to point out, now, if you are going for a Set Me L clone and you got a Mark Lamar and you've got the green Mark Lamar furniture and you've been on the, you know, trying to figure out if you're going to stick with the Mark Lamar furniture or get the surplus stuff, but you're like, oh, they look the same. I'm about to show you something that's going to bug you probably. So the biggest difference is the butt pad. It... Obviously, is a different color. It's glossy black, where this is almost a matte gray. Um, and then the screws, just like on the handguard, are flat heads on the surplus, and they're Allens on the Mark Lamar. And they do sit in there a little more, so I don't know if you can necessarily just switch these butt pads around, because those screws seem set in there a little bit more on the Mark Lamar. You might be able to, though. Another thing is, this one seems a little bit thinner. This one seems a little fatter. I don't know if that's just because the corners here have kind of worn away with use, and these ones are more defined. Um, also, this one is actually, uh, you know, functional. It's It's got some cushion to it. It's not super soft, but it's, it's definitely a butt pad. Whereas this, like, it's pretty much just as hard as the rest of the gun, <laughs> you, or the rest of the stock, you know what I mean? It's, it's no longer squishy. It probably was at one time, and it's just hardened over time. Um, so that's one thing that would definitely jump out to me if I were trying to make a clone. Um, now I will say, you know, you don't really need a soft butt pad 
on the Sentinel L. It's a very soft recoil. And as a matter of fact, I've never shot this particular Sentinel L um, with the Mark Lamar furniture. Uh, before I took it out to shoot it, I put on the surplus stuff and I was blown away at how soft the recoil was. So now that I have a somewhat functional butt pad on there, I may be blown away even more. So let's see, like I said, I went over the colors, screws. One thing I definitely need to mention if you're thinking about swapping out your furniture, um, and they just made this available like earlier this week, so by the time this video comes out, like less than a month still. But Set Me, or Mark Lamar, has, is finally coming out, so I guess it's not theirs, but they're offering it, an RS Regulate M-Lock handguard for your Set Me L. I'm a little excited about that. Now that one also, it replaces the heat shield as well. And it goes from the back all the way up to the front. It does leave a little bit of the section down below here exposed. Kind of like if you have a, it's not near me within hands reach, like one of the uh, Set Me C's, you'll know what I'm talking about. A little bit of metal exposed here. So you lose some of this real estate back here, but the handguard goes all the way out um, to your uh, little uh, lug here. And you will have to pop off, um, it looks like you're gonna have to pop off the sling attachment, so keep that in mind if you're dead set on having a sling, I'm not sure if you'll be able to use the original sling attachment or if you'll just have to get like a little M-lock um, sling attachment to get on there. Um, but they, that is now available as of right now, um, and those run 235 for the RS Regulate M-lock handguard. So I wanted to mention that now, while we're talking about stock sets, I need to go on my pin rant because I do have a pin rant. If you look in the manual, these you've got two pins back here for the butt stock, one pin right right there for the uh, trigger group, and then a pin up front for your handguard or heat shield. Now, the owner's manual just kind of mentions pins. And this is both the Macklemore owner's manual as, as well as the original Spanish Set Me L owner's manual. And it's just like put the pin in. It, it doesn't tell you which direction to put it in. And really, they can go in either direction. But there is definitely at least one pin you should put in one direction. No excuses. Another pin, if you're using a sling, you should be putting it in one direction. And then these two pins, it just doesn't matter. So let me get my sling out here. The first one is going to be on our handguard. I highly, highly, highly advise you to put in your pin the direction I did, which is it going in like that. Because if you have a you know, traditional style sling attached to it, this buckle is gonna be right up there pushing in on that pin. So if that pin was pushed in the other way, we'll just pretend that our Attachments over here as I knock everyone around. Sorry, viewers at home. If it's over here, I can easily push in on your pin and pop it loose. So obviously, you don't want that. The other pin that just no excuses, you should install it the way I did because I'm right, dang it, is your uh, trigger grip pin. It's right here above your magazine release and well, need I say more? Definitely need to put it in this way. So you put it in the other way, let's pretend that this bar right here is your magazine release button. You go to push your magazine release, you miss, or you just kind of got big fingers. You're gonna push that pin in and dislodging it. So you put it in this direction, that way, when you're up here hitting the mag release, even if you hit that pin, it's, it's not gonna make any difference. You're just gonna be pushing it in more. And then of course the butt stock, it, it doesn't matter if there's not really much that would be pushing in on those. You'll notice that I've got mine crisscrossed. The reason I did that, I came across someone with a video. I'm not even sure if it's a set me, it might've been the HK. But they mentioned that he uh, he crisscrosses his pin on the butt stock. Reason being if something should push up against this, it's only going to dis dislodge one pin rather than both. And I was just like, I can't argue with that. That makes sense to me. So. Went ahead and crisscross them. Once again, it's, it's not that big of a deal. But this, absolutely, you need to put it in specifically 
The handguard one, I guess it only matters if you're using a sling. Other than that, it doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, that is it. Um, all right, guys, I just wanted to show this to you for anyone that's kind of on the fence as to whether or not you should spend the money on getting the Macklemore furniture. I will say I've had this, the new stuff on here for quite a while now. And even then I've switched back and forth with the black, the black uh, stock set, just kind of playing around. The Macklemore furniture, it's day and night in feel of quality over the original surplus stuff. Now, if you're like me, you're probably still going to order a surplus stuff or a surplus stock set just to have it. Um, but the Macklemore stuff, it's really nice. Now, if you do order one of these semi L's from Macklemore's website, you do have that option of saying, I want a black coated one with a green furniture or a green coated one with a black furniture. They'll mix it up for you. Rather than, you know, if you want the two-tone look, buying one with the black furniture like I did, and then, you know, buying a surplus stock set or a new stock set from Macklemore. So I definitely think that the cost was worth it. Like I said, it's day and night. It's better quality stuff, which even might make it a little bit better towards heat dissipation, which has always been kind of an issue with these handguards. I think that's why they have these opened up sections in there, kind of help with air cooling. Now, I will say when I shot this, like I think the surplus handguard, it got a little warm at one point, but I was just doing mag after mag, not necessarily mag dumps, but you know, not really giving it much of a break in between. And this got just a little warm. I had the sling on here and I just kind of tucked the sling underneath my hand when I was holding it like that. And that completely fixed it. I wouldn't say it got hot. So I'm kind of curious to see if I can tell any difference with the newer uh, Marklemar stuff. Okay, so that's it. My uh, That's the end of my 10 minute video. That's now almost 27 minutes. Um, thank you guys for watching. If you don't have a semi L, but you're still kind of mesmerized by this gun, you've watched this video all the way up to this point go check out my video on the introduction or first look at the semi l um forgotten weapons um has some good videos on the semi l uh michiko's got good videos as well as small arm solutions it's a very inter in interesting history of the gun it's not a common gun at all especially with numbers in the u.s and it's a real fun gun to shoot so if this is catching your eye definitely look into it um it's a fun gun to shoot plus with the limited production run, I think it's not a bad investment either. All right, guys, that's it. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and stay shiny.